Hi everybody, Mike here, back once again, this time with part two of our Jerica high-end fashion retouch series. Part two of just exactly how many it takes. So if you're following along, um, in the last tutorial we touched on the skin tone and corrected that a little bit and we did some minor healing of uh, blemishes on the skin. Now we'll switch over to a skin smoothing technique. One of my favorite techniques for smoothing the skin. Just have a look uh, at what it is we're trying to deal with here. There's a lot of tone changes within the skin. The, sh the tone changes I mean are um, where we change from shadow like here on the ridge of the nose to a mid-tone or a highlight over here. The lines between these are very very sharp. You can see these big dark bold lines in here and the creases of uh, the cheeks and we want to soften those up just a little bit um, and I'll show you a, a, a fantastic technique for that. Let's zoom in real nice and close here and um, you can get a better look at the transitions. Just right across the forehead here we can see a really kind of a hot spot, uh, a mid-tone here and a shadow and a lighter spot and then a darker shadow and then a little lighter spot we have to try and smooth those transitions out just a little bit. Um, and I've got just the technique to do it. So, um, if you're following along, we're going to need to merge all these layers up. That is Control Alt, Shift, and E on your keyboard. Command Option, Shift, E on your Mac. That'll take all of the changes, all everything we've done, and merge it up to one layer up at the top. Now, if we wanted to get rid of anything, like delete our healing layer or anything like that, um, we couldn't make any changes without first deleting that layer. Now, what I want you to do is get your brush tool out at 100% opacity. Black as the foreground color. Right under the color picker is the quick mask tool. We can edit in quick mask mode just by clicking that tool or hitting Q, which is the keyboard shortcut key. And away we go. What we want to do is take a nice soft edge brush. I have my hardness at zero and start painting right on our model's skin. Now it looks like we're putting red paint all over the face. That just isn't the case. We're just applying a mask. What you want to be careful of is make sure you only apply this mask to detail-free areas of skin. So we don't want it on the eyebrows. We don't want it on um, the eyelids. Um, this earring here I'm going to be careful of, as well as just running just nicely along the jawline. Here we are. Lips as well stay very close, but um, don't hit them. Okay, resizing my brush as we go along here. Oops. Okay, so we can see what happened here as I have gone over a couple of areas that I didn't want to go over. So there's a little bit of lips here that I um, I masked out by accident. I can come over here to my tools palette and pick my eraser tool. That's in with a couple of different erasers. I just want the eraser tool. And it's just like a brush, a brush over the area that I selected by accident. And we will remove the mask. There we go. Get it off that eyebrow. Fantastic. Now I can go right back to my brush tool and again I'm painting on a mask. Perfect. So now I'm going to get close again to the edges of the nose but not right over. Leave that detail line. It's a little bit more on the lips. Why didn't you tell me? Jeez. Okay, thanks. Alright, beautiful. So, now we'll hit our quick mask tool once again, or Q. And that changes our picture. What it actually does is changes our image to a selection. It selects the entire image except for what we had masked off. However, we want to make the change to the area we had masked off, so we'll come up here to Select and Inverse. Now, just the face is selected. 
Now you might be saying, hey, she's got all kinds more skin here than just that on her face. And that's absolutely true. And yes, I would use this technique on every bit of skin that is showing on a model, unless it had too much detail in it. You want to really be careful about um, arms and feet, depending on how much detail is in the image. But one thing that's really important, uh, at least to me, is that you have as much control over every step of a retouch as possible. And that means, um, even though I would perform this technique everywhere, I wouldn't perform it all at once. So we're going to do the face, then I would do the chest, and then I would do over here on this darker part here, allowing me to have different levels of the effect applied to different areas of the skin. Okay, so here we go. Control and J on your keyboard. That will create a brand new layer, but only of our selection. We actually want two of those, so if you hit Control J one more time, you can see we now have two different layers. And those just show our model's face. If I just view that layer, you can see all we have here is just Jerrica's skin. This is a several step process. What I want to do is work on the bottom layer, or the first layer that we duplicated, or that we created that was just skin. And we're going to apply our blurring to it. So um, we'll fill the screen, bring her in a lot closer so that we can really look at what's going on. And filter down to blur. We're going to use surface blur. Now the reason I use the surface blur is because it um, it will, if it hits the lines, it'll kind of keep them in check. Uh, it works really well for this particular effect, I think. So, my radius is between 10 and 20 right now, depending on the resolution of the image. I have a pretty high resolution picture here, so we're going to stay up around 20. I want to bring my threshold way up to 200. If your image is a lower res image, um, you know, you have not, not that big of a file, maybe 10 and 100. You can play with these numbers though. I, I mean, just give it a play, Let's see what's happening up here at 250, and what's happening right down here at 11. Okay, so here we are. Now we can sort of see what's happened is, once we allow that effect to go through, all of our shadows and highlights are still here, but the transitions between them are a lot softer, um, which already is really nice. Now there are some skin blurring, pardon me, skin smoothing tutorials that'll tell you that's your, that's how it's done. You're finished. Um, there's no detail here. There's nothing. You can't see anything except for blur, and that's not, um, that's not what we want. If I go up to, let's move Jerrica back into the center of our screen, we go up to this layer over here and turn it back on. Oh, all of our changes seem to have gone away. Now what we're going to do is change this blending mode up here with this drop down menu all the way down here to linear light. That's all gone kind of funny colors. That's good if that step happens. If this happens, you're on the right path. If it doesn't happen, there's been a mistake somewhere. Go ahead and back up and start over again and figure out what is needed. Now here it is. Here's where the magic happens. You're going to go to your filter menu with that new top layer selected and go down to other and apply a high pass filter. The high pass filter is going to bring back all of this detail. We'll zoom right in before I apply that filter so you can have a look. There we are. So, you don't need it set this radius at a very high amount at all. I like to um, highlight this and use my wheel to just bring it in a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Somewhere between one and two pixels is plenty, usually. Again, it's going to depend on the size of your image, the resolution of your file, uh, the size of the pores, and your model. 
Okay. Um, anywhere around here is really seeming quite nice. I like... I think I like a 1.7 on there. There we are. Okay. Now I can still see a couple of areas where the transitions are a little more harsh than I'd like them to be. Uh, the forehead being one. Back down to this layer that we had blurred. I'll pick my lasso tool and with the lasso tool I'll pick the areas that I think require a little bit more blur. And then I'll go to my blur menu and apply that surface blur yet again. Okay. Now sometimes uh, you may want to do that two, three, four times. I, I mean it, it really is. It's up to you. I'm headed again. Um, coming over here. There's a hard line here that I'd like to fix up. Oops. That softens it. I must just a little bit. Cheeks. Just soften up that highlight. Yeah. Okay, I really like that. That's okay. That's looking pretty good. Now, if I take these two layers and I select them both by holding Control and I hit Control G, that'll group those layers. I can just turn on and off that effect by clicking the little eye icon. If I zoom in, we can really see the difference we made here. There's a lot of differences in tone that we've smoothed right out. There's some blemishes that we didn't get out with the healing tool. All of those seem to have disappeared. And one might call that some pretty perfect skin. Uh, in out here at 100%. There's without the skin smooth. And there's with. Okay, we'll, we'll back out. I will go ahead and apply this technique to the other areas of skin on the image um, to varying degrees, just as much as I like to have it. And then we'll uh, meet back here next week for the next in a series of videos. Please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll get an alert on it. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.